Uh, let me start to go around. Uh, once again, thank you to thank you all. I'm just starting it over again. Sorry. Uh, thank you all for attending our Wednesday webinar. Uh, my name is Michael Wimberly, and I will be presenting uh, document management tools in Windchill. Um, <clears throat> those that have been on, on our webinars before, you kind of know the general layout. Uh, so we'll go through and have a general uh, objective for the webinar, which is simply going in and talking about and showing the different tools to manage documents um, inside of Windchill and how to go through and edit those documents. And then, of course, upload the documents back inside of Windchill, um, either manually or even through um, the different applications. And we'll look at that as well. Uh, so the overall agenda, of course, a general introduction of myself and Boundary Systems. A general overview of the topic as far as what we're actually going to go in and cover and then of course the demonstration of the product inside of windchill and then after that we'll have a, a q a after that um, inside of your um, webinar i'm sorry your go to go to webinar uh, menus on the, on the right side you will have an area for questions so you can go through and type in your questions inside of there um, and I will answer them. Um, my goal is to kind of answer all the questions at the end. Um, but if it is directly related to where we are, um, I will go through and, and try to answer those questions as they come in. But once again, the overall goal is to basically answer the questions at the end um, so that we can address them all at one time. All right, so general overview of myself. Once again, my name is Michael Wimberly. Um, I am a senior technical specialist here at Boundary Systems. I've been working with Boundary Systems now for um, coming up on six years. Um, I have over 20 years of experience of working uh, with PTZ products. Actually, I think I'm about 25 right now. Um, and I am certified trainer in Creo as well as Windchill classes, as well as certified implementation specialist for Windchill as well. Uh, as far as Boundary Systems, Boundary Systems is a technology leader. Um, some of our partners that allow us to be the technology leader, of course, are PTC. We also have Solid Thinking. We have eTrage. We have ZWCAD. And there are some additional companies that we have that we'll list on one of the next um, overheads that we'll look at. Uh, we've been one of the uh, 16th fastest companies, um, private owned companies in the greater Cleveland area. We also have capabilities such as uh, product lifecycle management, data management, CAD design and consulting, simulation, and product development. These are the things that allow us to be a technology leaders because we have the capabilities in all those different areas uh, of uh, product management. Um, what you're seeing on the right side of the screen are just some of the companies that we've done work with currently in the past. Um, if your company's name isn't up there, we'd love to be working with you as well. Um, and we'll give you contact information for you that you can um, contact us and potentially um, become a customer. Uh, some of our industry awards, we've been in the Inc. 5000. We were in there several years. Um, we've also been in the Weatherhead uh, 100, which is uh, Northeast Ohio's fastest growing companies. Uh, and then some, of course, our major accreditations are um, Wincho is a certified implementer. We're also a PT certified pro, uh, service provider. And of course, we are a certified uh, training partner for PTC. So any of those things, um, we of course, as I say, are certified to do um, with our training, of course, our training. We do have training center um, here in the Cleveland area, uh, which is where Boundary Systems is headquartered. But we also um, do training in other cities, such as Chicago. We do them in Pittsburgh. We do them up in the Detroit area. Uh, south in Cincinnati, which is actually where I'm from. Um, and of course, wherever we need to go, we do have a set of traveling laptops that we can use to come on site if necessary. So we've done that quite a bit. We can come on site and do training for you um, uh, in any of the, the courses. So once again, we do hold Creo classes. We also hold Windchill classes. So any of those things that you may need, uh, we can go in and provide that training for you as well. Uh, so we also do, of course, mentoring and things like that that once again, we can do on site or we can bring you into our one of our facilities and do the training as well. Uh, once again, some of our uh, product solutions, once again, allow us to become to be a technology leader um, are, as we stated before, PTC um, with the different areas inside of there. We have solid thinking. We have eTrage. Uh, we have Mold X3D, we have Mentor Graphics for the Flow EFD, and then, of course, we have ZWCAD as well. Uh, for each one of those, we actually do webinars as well, um, and I'll show you a link to the different webinars so you can see uh, Mold Flow that you may use, um, any of our integration type tools, uh, plotting tools, 
uh, AutoCAD um, alternatives, things like that. We will go through and have different um, things for that as well. Uh, to contact myself, uh, once again, my name is Michael Wimberly, and as I said, I'm out of Cincinnati. Uh, my phone number to reach me is 513-415-0747, um, or you can, of course, reach me by email, which is mwimberly at boundarysys.com. Um, for any sales-related questions, you can call our sales team at 440-274-0291, or you can send an email to sales at boundarysys.com. All right. So things we're going to cover when dealing with um, documents inside of uh, Windchill. So the three primary areas that we're going to go through and work on are, of course, how to load non-CAD data or basically documents into Windchill, how to manage non-CAD data in Windchill, and once again, how to retrieve, update, and check in non-CAD data. Once again, we're talking documents. And when we talk documents, we're talking a general scope of documents. A document can be a Word file, it can be an Excel file, it can be a PDF, it can be a JPEG, it can be a movie file, um, you name it, any type of an electronic type file can be managed with, with inside of Windchill um, as a document. Um, and the other thing that's beneficial with that is Windchill does recognize uh, the, uh, the extensions of those as well. So when we go in and import a Word file, it will recognize that it is a Word file. We can also go through and set up uh, different attributes for them as well. All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and jump into our demonstration, which is simply Windchill. So inside of Windchill, um, <clears throat> I am actually inside of a subdirectory that we have that is called Documents. So inside of here, you can see that we have many documents inside of here. Uh, that is one of the things that we do recommend. Um, if you are storing a lot of information inside of Windchill, um, just for organization's sake, it's not bad to kind of go in and, and create a folder that you put your documents in. Now, once again, it's not required because we can search. We know that we have multiple search tools up here at the top. We have search in the table. So if we have our CAD files, um, our document type files, WT part files, all those things stored inside of here, you know, we can just as easily search for them and find them if we need to as well. So there's nothing stopping us from going in and putting everything in one location. But once again, it's not bad to go through and organize them. Now, because these are documents, uh, we can also go in and uh, not only set a folder, but we can also control those separately from our CAD files. So we can create what are called um, object initialization rules or OIRs for each of the different documents. So the documents is a general term, but underneath documents, there's multiple subtypes of documents. And we'll look at those in just a moment. Um, that we can go in and use. For each one of those different document types, we can go through and set a folder location. We can go through and set a specific life cycle for it. So the life cycle that we, that we want to go in and control our documents with may be different than what we want to go through and control our CAD files with, because our CAD files may go through a bunch of uh, checks and balances uh, for the overall design, but our documents may either be in work or released. There may not be an intermediate um, stage so we can go through and basically have a really simple life cycle that we can set up for our um, our documents that we go through and use. We can also go through uh, and, of course, use our, our promotion requests. So just like with any of our other document or any of our other CAD files, and I'll just go and select on this one so we can kind of look at the information associated with it. Um, we can come over here and we can see, OK, it does recognize that it is a Microsoft Word document. The context, this is the actual uh, life cycle that it's using and we can see the stages that it's using. Uh, but once again, we can go through and change that. It may be simply design and release, or you may have a longer um, uh, life cycle that you may want. You can see the location of it, um, any of those different things that you can go through and see for that particular document. Also, we can also have attributes that are specific to the document type. So just like we have attributes slash parameters that we can use for, um, for the Creo files or your CAD files, we can have that exact same thing here for our actual document files. So we can have document specific attributes that will only show up for our documents. Uh, once again, we may not need them for anything else, but there are different information that we wanna go through and export out of the document um, attribute wise or associate with the document 
that we want to go through and display in this table over here. So there's quite a bit of information that we can go through and use. Uh, one of the most important things that we have for that is, of course, the content, which is the actual document file itself that we will go through and use. So those are available. So if you already have documents inside of um, Windchill, it's just a matter of going in and downloading those. Once again, it recognizes that it is an actual Word file, and I'm going to simply go in and download this file that's already inside the database. And then I have the ability to simply go through and download that file. And I'm going to do a save as just so I can specify where it's going. I want this document, of course, to go to my desktop. So I'll go ahead and save that directly to my desktop. And then I'll just say open folder. And of course, now there is that actual document. And once again, it's a Word file. So I can go in and simply open it up in Word. And there's a little saying that says, when was the last time uh, you did something for the first time? You know, simple document. And I just want to change the uh, explanation on it. So I want to go through and make it, instead of a question, I want to make it a statement. And I'll go through and save that. Now I'm going to save that and update it on my desktop. Now, if I want to go through and now upload that file, I would have to come over here and check it out just like I would anything else. So with that particular file, or let's just even look at the actions uh, drop down menu initially. So you still have the download primary file, uh, which is what I just did here when I selected on an icon. Um, and you have your open in Creo view, um, like a PDF or things like that. Um, I think some of the, I think Word document may open up inside it. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm not going to test that right now. Um, but then, of course, you have checkout, which is simply going in and checking it out to you. Um, you can also do a checkout and download if you know you're going to go through and make changes to that file. So go ahead and check out and download that particular file um, and then work on it and then simply check it back in. There's also a checkout and edit. Um, there is an um, un undo checkout. Of course, there's an edit itself, replace content, which is simply basically doing a whole, the whole cycle of checking it out, uploading, letting you upload a new file, and then checking the file in. And like I said, because this is an actual file that is managed inside the database, you still have the ability to go through and do your revisions. So as you can see, this one is actually at 2.2 versus being at one dot whatever it may be, or even zero dot whatever. So depending on where you started your um, your versioning scheme at. And then of course we have the ability to go through and add it to our change processes if we want to, go through the actual pro promotion process, once again, to go through the different stages of the life cycle. And then of course, all the different options that we have associated here. So for this one, I'm gonna come in and do a simple, um, replace content. So what I want to do is simply update this file because I've already made changes to it. It's not checked out right now. So I'm going to do a file, replace content. And what it does is you see it immediately checks that file out. Now it's looking for me to go through and upload the file. I'm going to go through and find that file that I had again, which was the first time. That's a new file. And then I say, OK. And it checks it back in, and there's the 2.3 version of the file. It's still, same thing, go to the history tab. You can see all the history is still right there and all the different versions of the file. So if we did want to go back in time, that all those documents are still stored inside a windshield, just like everything else has been. So all that information will still be there that you can go through and access and see old versions of the file that you may want to go in and download and use those as starting points just like we do with our CAD files. So we may want to go back in time, find a version, and use that as a template to move forward. Now, with that, um, just mentioning templates, if we come over here, I'm going to go directly into this, um, into this blower um, product. And underneath that blower product, there's an option in here for templates. What you can do is when you go through and you start your files, you can actually go through and upload the template for that. So a lot of companies have standard documentation uh, formats. So for a you know company minutes, there's a format of that. It has the company letterhead. It has the general layout with the bullet items, all the recess bullet items, things like that already set up. Uh, for a presentation, you have a 
uh, template for the actual um, PowerPoint presentation that you may want to go through and use. So we can go through and, and actually upload that into the file or into the, the database. So whenever we create a new file, we can then download that template at the same time and now use that template as the starting point to go in and create our documents. So with that, for this one here, I'm going to go into the actual, uh, sorry, didn't mean to actually download that. I'm going to go into the actual presentation. And then once again, we still have that content and there's a content right there, <clears throat> excuse me. And I have the same options for that particular template that I want to go through and add or upload um, a new template. So with this one, I can do a checkout and edit. And it kind of gives me the same general layout as replace. The only difference is, is that with the replace is going to immediately check that file back in. This one, I can just do a save and not check it in at this point in time or check it in when I'm ready. So I can come over here. I'm going to do my browse. And I'm going to go into, I think it's under my webinars. Yep. And there's my presentation. Um, template. And I'm going to go ahead and open that. That's going to now be the template that I'm going to go through and use anytime I create a presentation. And once again, if there was a secondary item now for the presentation, maybe not a second, anything secondary that you really need to have. But let's just say you're doing a statement of work and you have another sheet that is like the sign offs. So I can go through and create a a document type for statement of work. And then for the attachment for that, I can have the sign off for so the customers basically agreed that this is what it was. So those two pieces of documentation go together so I can actually add one as an attachment to the other. And then when I download, I can download each one of those particular files. So if I had an attachment, I would set that at that particular point. I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and check this in. And then here I have the options of once again, um, keep it checked out after the check in and, of course, enable it to allow me to go through and use that actual um, attack or the actual template. So now when I go through and create a presentation, I'm going to go in and start with that particular documentation. So now I'm going to go back to uh, the blower. And I'm going to go back into my documents folder and then inside of here is where we go through and begin the creation of our files. So we have the ability of right here to simply go in and create a new document. So here are all the different document types. So as I mentioned before, there are many different document types that we can go through and create. You can see everything from an agenda to a contract to a general document, memos, plans, presentations, so on and so forth. Um, you can go through, like I mentioned, um, there's a statement of work down here at the bottom. Maybe you have a document type that is specific to your company. You can create that as a soft type underneath the document. Excuse me, underneath the document type, um, object type, and then be able to go through and manipulate that as well. So these are um, most of these are out of the box that you can go through and use. Um, but I'm going to go in and just simply go in and create a regular document. And as I mentioned, also each one of those document types can have its own set of object initialization rules. So I can go through and once again, have a different life cycle for each one of those. Um, I can have a different folder location for each one of those. Um, I can go through and specify a versioning scheme. So all those different things we can go through and set for each one of those different object types and templates. So not all of those were listed in the templates because we don't have templates for a lot of them. But we can go through and set up as many templates as we want to. So once again, I'm leaving it at the document type for this one. Um, and then there are a couple of default documents that we can go through and use for the document type. And also, when we go in and create the document, we have the ability to go through and create just a document that's a placeholder because we're going to create the document later on. But we just want to go through and create the placeholder for it. So it can create a document that simply has no content. Or we can create one where we go in and upload the local file. You can create a document that's simply a link to another web page. So instead of it actually being a document, it's simply a link that when you select on it, it'll go through and take you to the particular page for the link or external storage where you can go through and actually um, relate it to another location as well. So once again, for this one, I'm going to go through and select the local file. I can come over here and browse to it. Um, and as I said, any document type is available. As you notice, my type is simply set to all. 
So there's any type of electronic document I can go through and add as a document type inside of my wind chill session. So I'm going to come over here and add the um, wind chill, I'm sorry, webinar listing. It goes in and adds that document. You can see that it also becomes the name of the document. Right now, the document itself is auto numbered as far as the actual numbering scheme of it. And I can give it a description. And of course, if I want to specify a different location, I can. I can also go on and select next. And if I had an attachment for it, I can go through and now add the attachment. If I had an attachment but that was part of the template, then I can go on and remove it. Or I can go through and specify a different type of file that I want to go through and use local file, a URL, or once again, an external external storage file. So I'll go ahead and finish that. And then it goes in and creates that document for me. All right, I'm going to go ahead and sort by the modification. And then we can see there's that document that we've just created. Now, at that point, I can do whatever I want to with it. I can go through and download that file again and update it uh, without any problems. Um, the other thing that we can do, I'm going to go back to my documents folders. So I did that as a single file. I can also come over and select, instead of selecting on single new document, I can come over to Actions, New, and there's the option for multiple documents. So I can come over here and select multiple documents. And now I can go through and find the different documents that I want to go through and add. So I'm going to come over here uh, and add a couple of documents. And I don't want to add anything that's too large. So I'm going to add a couple of PDFs. I'm going to come over here and add trail file. Get those at uh, that one. That's good enough. So I can then go in and take those files and simply drag them into there. And there's all three files. So those three files are now created. They're all stored at the same location. And those are all a single document type. So those are all documents that are there. Uh, let me review this question real quick. There was a question that came through. Um, so for the default, the question is for the default templates, when you create a new document, can you show how to get rid of uh, default templates? The default list is, is longer than our users will want to look at. What's the difference between general and um, regular document? Um, so to actually remove those, you can actually just disable them. So in that template listing, we can go through and actually, I'm sorry, in, in that listing, and then there's also... Uh, a setting a little bit deeper that we can actually go in and disable those. Um, I will actually review this. Um, actually, I will write down this question and I'll actually send the information uh, and I can actually send it out to everyone because there is a way to go in and disable what's in that list. And then the difference between a general document and just a regular document is more or less just more the attributes. So we can have a general document um, that once again may have you know, certain attributes associated with them and then a regular document type that may have other attributes. So as far as functionality wise, there's really not much difference between the two. Uh, it's just once again, just two different document types. All right. So once again, we've gone through and create those three documents. I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And then those three documents have been created. Now, there's also an additional way to go through and create new documents as well. So there's an option in here uh, for actions new. And instead of going in and saying new document or new, doc new multiple documents, we can actually upload documents from a zip file. So if you're getting a bunch of documentation from customer or vendor or whatever, um, or you're transferring a bunch of data from 
a share drive into Windchill because now you're going to start managing all that documentation inside of Windchill. You can put that documentation into a zip file. So I'm going to say upload documentation um, from a compressed file. I'm going to browse and on my desktop. I have bulk document zip. Now, with this, it doesn't show me every individual document that's in there. Um, so that's just one of the things you kind of have to rely on is that, you know, the files that you have in there are the files that you want um, because you create the zip file or the customer or whomever create that particular zip file. Once again, when you do that, you know, you have the ability to specify the type of document that it is. Um, and then once again, the different check in comments, any description that you want to go through and add um, any of that information. Um, there's also some additional qualifications, once again, depending on where it came from. And then existing document behavior, you know, make no changes to existing documents, iterate existing documents if access permits. So basically, if we're uploading a document that's already inside a windchill, then we're telling it what to do with that. So if the document is already in there, don't do anything. Basically, don't bring in that new file. If the document is already in there, then basically create a new iteration of that document using a new version of it. OK, so at this point, I'll just simply go ahead and select OK. And what it's doing is basically unzips that file and it goes in and creates those six documents that I just went in and created. And you can see there in the pop up that it goes in and it creates those six different documents. Once again, doesn't matter the, the actual document type. It will go in and out, extract all of those directly inside of Winchip all at one time. So once again, it makes it that much easier to go through and create and manipulate the actual files inside of Windchill. Now, what I've shown you up to this point is just simply managing the files inside of Windchill. I've also showed you the ability to go through and download the file and manipulate that file within inside of Windchill as well. Um, I'm sorry, outside of Windchill and then simply uploading the new version of that file. The other thing that we can do is within Windchill, there is an application that is called desktop integration. What desktop integration is, it actually integrates Windchill into Microsoft Office products. So PowerPoint, Word, Excel, um, I think those are the main three. I'm trying to think of the other ones. Um, I don't remember if it's an access or not, but I know there's there's a couple of them that it's in. I know those are the three main ones and I don't I know for sure that they're inside of there. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go through and turn on that option. So I already have desktop integration loaded from my um, computer. If you don't have it, um, if you have full um, PDM link, then under software downloads, you'll actually see an option for document management for desktop integration. So you can actually go through and use that and download that and integrate that into uh, Windchill or I should say into Office. So I'm going to go back to my quick links. I'm going to go into my settings and go to preferences. And then under preferences, under attachments, there's an option here for file download behavior. So as soon as you in, um, load in desktop integration, it's actually going to change this automatically for you. So it's going to actually go in and start using it specifically. So. What I'm going to go in, oh, wrong one, sorry. Uh, that's the one. So file download mechanism, how do you download the files? I'm gonna go through and specify that we're gonna use Windchill desktop integration to download the files. So now what it's doing, and I'll show you once I go back into the, um, let me go into the documents, okay. Once I go back into here, one of the things that we'll see immediately is when I go in and select on like this file right here to download, now the download type has changed. So it's not actually downloading the Excel file, it's actually downloading it as a WCDTI file, which is Windchill desktop uh, integration file, which is basically a file that it basically uses for desktop integration. So we can go through and use that. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out, I cancel that at this moment. Um, because I'm going to go a, a different route. So what I'm going to do actually for this one, I'm going to go in and create a new document. So I'm going to go to Actions, New Document. And this one, I'm going to go in and create a new presentation. 
And because we went in and created that presentation template, I'm going to go through and use that. It says the primary content will be uploaded from the template that you selected. Uh, so there it is. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, Mike presentation. I don't think I've created that already. And I'm going to say greatest presentation ever. Just because that's what I believe. And then, of course, at that point in time, I can do a checkout and download. So I can go in and select next. Once again, if I had attachments, I would go through and specify those. And then at this point, I will go ahead and select finish. And then it's in the, once again, uh, Windchill desktop integration file. And instead of going and saving it, I'm going to go ahead and open it directly inside of PowerPoint. Um, I do know the other question is what Office versions are supported with integration. Uh, I don't remember 100% if 360 is. I think it is, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I know any, I, I'm, I know any downloaded version or this locally installed version of Windchill is um, fully integrated, but I don't remember if the web version of that is. Um, but yeah, I know any 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 local version of the file that you have, desktop integration will work. Um, but like I said, I'm not sure if the online version is. I can't be 100% sure on that one. All right. Um, all right. So now. My document has been downloaded. Sorry, I'll minimize that. So the file that I went in and documented or, or created, the presentation has been downloaded and it's basically going to go through and open the file. So it tells me that this file, my presentation, you know, uh, the PowerPoint has been downloaded. Do you wish to open the file? Yes, I do. And there it is. So this is our template that we will go in and use to now create our PowerPoints. So instead of going in and creating one from scratch, We've uploaded this file into Windchill, and now anytime we're ready to go through and create a presentation, we will come in here and just begin to edit this file. Greatest presentation ever. Today's date. So I'll go through and change that to May 2nd. No. And then once again, then I will continue to go and add any additional information that we will go through and use. Great. Now, the other thing that you will see inside of my PowerPoint is now I have a tab for Windchill. And there's the Windchill information. So I can go through and create a new file. Once again, using that template, I can go through and open up a file. Nope. I can go into Windchill, open up a file. I can go in and create a new file. From the, doc, from the template or just create a new document. I can still do the update. You know, there's a check-in, there's a promote, you know, edit, edit any attributes. So any of those attributes that we, that we created that were object type specific, well, we can go through and edit those. You know, and then you have the additional information, which is just the setup information. So right now, of course, it's connected to our actual windshield system. So I've gone through and I've updated this information and now I want to go through and check it in. So I can come over here and select check in. And now it goes in and it tells me, OK, this is the file that's going to go through an update. Go and select next. Then I have the properties for that. So here we have, do I want to keep it checked out? Send local copy to recycling bin and open uh, keep document open. So at this point, once I check it in, if I am completely done with this, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to send this to the recycling bin. That way, I basically don't have a working copy in a directory that I access on a normal basis, so like my My Documents. I don't have this version of this file on my, on my hard drive. It's in the recycling bin, which, once again, we only go there when we have an oops that we want to go through and retrieve stuff. So the next time I need it, I'll download the latest version of that file from my hard drive. Uh, I'm sorry, not from my hard drive, from Windchill. So that way, I'm always going back to the source 
of the file instead of going in and pulling up on my hard drive and not doing the actual check-in that I need for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, send the local file to recycling bin. I don't wanna keep it checked out and I don't wanna keep the document open. So I'll go ahead and select okay. And it's going through the process. As you can see, it closed it out. And if I go in and refresh the screen, make sure it's done. There's Mike's presentation. There it is at um, 1.2, which is once again now the updated version of that particular file that we've gone through and created. And once again, we go to the history, we can see the two different versions of that file. So with desktop integration, once again, you have Windshield directly integrated into your actual office um, products. So instead of having to go through and download everything, then open up Word and manipulating it in Word, and then going through the um, checkout edit or the replace functionality with inside of Windshield, we're working inside of Office. So do everything you need to do just like you um, inside of Office, just like we do inside of Creo. You have the check-in and everything directly inside the file menus from Creo. We have that same Windshield, we have a Windshield tab directly inside of Office products, where we can do that same functionality inside of there as well. So with inside of Windchill, we have full capability to go through and manipulate any of the files, uh, whether we have desktop integration or not, but we can go in and store any object type that we want inside of Windchill. So any type of electronic data can be stored <clears throat> inside of Windchill. Once again, we can set life cycles for them. We can set versioning for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. We can also, as we just saw, use desktop integration to go in and manipulate those with inside of um, the actual office product itself. And once again, never have to go through and work inside of Windchill. So we can actually go in and open up files directly from, um, excuse me, <clears throat> from PowerPoint, from Excel, from Word. And once again, just like in Creo, we don't actually pull up a separate browser. We can actually work within that application. So I can just open up um, PowerPoint and begin working inside of PowerPoint. It will once again require me to log on because it has to verify my identity that I can actually access the system, but that's just like inside of Creo. It's just verifying who you are. Then you have full functionality directly inside of Office products. So full functionality. Once again, we can go through and store whatever type of data types that we want to. Uh, we can go in and load files one at a time. We can go through and load multiple files by using a control key or if we have to go in and do kind of a bulk loading of files, we can go through and say, upload documents from a compressed file and let it go through and simply extract them all and create a document for each one of those objects inside of that particular uh, zip file or RAR file, whatever it is that you're going in and using. So full functionality, any type of data stored inside of there, central location, um, creating templates for them so that everybody has the same starting point um, for those particular objects. Uh, we can go through and set that up as well. Um, that way, when you do create that object type, you can download the default template and work from that template forward. Uh, or once again, you can go in and copy one of the existing ones, whatever you want to go through and do. So you have the ability to go through and use full functionality inside of Windshield, inside of the applications, whatever it is that you want. All right, so at this point, That's all, folks. So any additional questions on anything that we've covered in this particular webinar? Once again, if you do have questions, you can go through and uh, enter them into the question area on the right side of the screen. Uh, you're welcome. So as you're thinking of your questions, if there are any, I will once again show you the information available. So if you want to find out any of our upcoming webinars, you can go to our website at boundarysys.com slash webinars. Um, if you want to find out any training that we have coming up, same thing, go to boundarysys.com slash training dash schedule, and it'll go through and show you um, our training schedule as well. Um, you can also see anything else that we have going on, uh, hands-on workshops, because we have those coming up. We have for 
uh, uh, Creo 5. So we're actually running those currently. Um, we also have them for our other products. So the Flow EFD is we so we do those as well uh, for any of the different um, applications that we actually have. Um, and then once again, the contact information that we have uh, for me directly, as well as for our sales department. Uh, and we do have uh, technical support. So we do have a support system, which is basically a ticket ticketing system. You can go to support.boundarysys.com and open up a ticket. Um, and then from there, that will go to our support team. We have a person that we designate as the engineer of the week uh, that will actually go through and uh, be in charge of those tickets. And then, of course, if they can't go through and it's not one of theirs, uh, expertise, areas of expertise, they can go through and send that to someone else. But you will get responses. You can also send it to support at boundarysys.com, which is an email address, and that'll go to our support team as well. Uh, we did have two questions come in. Is it common for documents to have attributes for users to fill in? Uh, yes. Um, and that's once again, it just depends on the information that you want to propagate. Um, so when you're going to the information page on that document, is there some specific information? So is there things like, you know, you want um, a product line? You know, do you want a sales order number? You know, whatever it is that you want to go through and have that document associated with. So what information do they need to know about the document without even having to open up the document? So we know what the document is because we know what type by the title of it, but what is the additional information? So we know this is a statement of work, but for what customer? You know, that can be an attribute. So we can go through and fill in the customer information. So it's all the information that you want to go through and have displayed for that particular document. Um, the other question for that is, do you have to have administrative rights for this to work? No, you just need to be the ability to go in and create documents. Um, you, you'll need, um, you'll probably need the administrative rights to, of course, do the installation if you're in a desktop integration. But other than that, no, everything else is just, you know, regular user access. So they can just go in. If you have, if you have the ability to go in and create documents, you have the ability to do everything that I've done. So you just need to be able to go in and create and modify documents. Uh, can documents be classified similar to how parts uh, can be in parts link? I don't see why not. Um, maybe one of the classifications will be the document type. Um, I haven't done that, just so you know. So I don't know if I read that question out loud, but the question is, can documents be classified similar to how parts link, uh, parts can be in parts link? Um, like I said, I, I think they can, but then also with that, that may go into conjunction with the previous question of the administ uh, attributes. Um, so yeah, if you have attributes, um, then those attributes can be used inside of parts link. So we can go through and use those as well, or in the parts link type functionality where, yes, you can go through and classify them as well. So that can be one of the classifications that are used inside of there. And the other question was, can you make those attributes optional or required? Yes, you can. So when you're actually going in and designating those attributes for that object type, one of the actual um, items that you can specify that specify for that attribute is that that attribute is a required attribute. So just like when you're creating a new document, the name is required. You can go through and say, OK, your customer number is required. So you can go through and set those up where these attributes have to be filled in. So. So, yes. They can be required. And yes, um, as far as I know, they can be classified and the attributes that you use can also help with that classification. All right. Any additional questions on anything at this point in time? OK, so if you do come up with any additional questions, definitely feel free to contact me. Um, as I said, my contact information is currently on the screen. Uh, once again, 
uh, Michael Wimberly, 513-415-0747, or mwimberly at boundarysys.com. As well as any sales-related questions, you can reach our sales department at 440-274-0291, or once again, sales at boundarysys.com. And once again, we have our support for wind chill as well as um, Creo and even document management. Um, we can go through and assist with that as well. So once again, you can open up a ticket specifically at support.boundarysys.com or you can send an email to support at boundarysys.com. So either one of those, will once again, to get to our support team and someone will get in touch with you. Um, so we can go in and assist with your whatever issues you have as well. All right, so at this point, uh, once again, I want to say thank you for your attendance, and I look forward to you being on the next webinar. Thank you, and have a great rest of the day. Thank you all, too.